Hamsey Green is a village in Surrey, strung along the B269 road between Sandersted and Wallingham. During the middle of the last century, it was home to a busy private airfield, and our story starts in 1933. On April the 29th and 30th of that year, Alan Cobham's National Aviation Day display team came to Hamsey Green. This photograph of the fleet of aircraft was probably taken on April the 30th as they departed Hamsey Green. The road running diagonally across the photograph is the B269 towards Wallingham. The south end of the land used as a temporary aerodrome is in the foreground. Cobham's team erected a screen of sackcloth and poles around the perimeter of the field to discourage hedge guests from enjoying a free display. These delightful images of the team's de Havilland fox moth used for joyriding were taken over Wallingham the same weekend. A month later, in May 1933, Richard Exton Gardner, who with his family lived at Overhill in Wallingham, a couple of miles south of Hamsey Green, purchased several fields from Hamsey Green Farm. The Gardner family had owned Yardley Cosmetics and after public flotation in 1920, remained majority shareholder. Richard Gardner did not fly, but his two sons did. Charles, the elder son, learnt to fly in a moth at Surrey Flying Services at Croydon in 1931. The younger son, Richard, learnt to fly at Hamble in 1933. To avoid confusion with his father, Richard Jr. was generally known as Jimmy. I shall do likewise for this film. The field used by the National Aviation Day display team in 1933 was to the west of the B269. The land purchased by the Gardner family was to the east. The airfield had no marked runways and could be used in most directions depending on wind conditions. The hangar as marked was actually two hangars with large semicircular concrete aprons to the west and south. The housing developments marked to the west of the airfield were of little consequence not being completed until the 1950s. Only Hamsey Green Gardens was completed before the Second World War. As soon as the aerodrome was completed, then several aircraft moved in. The gardeners owned many aircraft between them over the coming years, but early residents included this monospa, which Charles Gardner flew in the 1934 King's Cup air race. Jimmy bought this leopard moth, later sold to India, and Charles bought the first of several Percival Gulls to be based at Hamsey Green. In 1935, Charles Gardner bought this Compa Swift, using it for the regular commute between Hamsey Green and Rochester Airport, where he worked as an engineer for Pobjoy Air Motors and Short Brothers. In January 1936, accompanied by his school friend Peter Mercel, Charles flew a short scion from England to Delhi to take part in the Viceroy's Cup air race. They came a credible sixth place and arrived back in England in March 1936, having encountered no problems whatsoever. Pobjoy Air Motors had to issue a correction to their advertisement due to a pre fruiting oversight. For a short while a Dragon Rapide lived at Hamsey Green, but it was sold to Spanish nationalists in the summer of 1936. In July of the same year, Charles, accompanied by Giles Guthrie, won the King's Cup air race in Sir Connop Guthrie's Percival Vega Gull at an average speed of 164 miles an hour. Having bought the ex-Tom Campbell Black Percival Mugull, Charles flew to a victory again in 1937, this time at an average speed of 233 miles an hour. It was his last and fastest air race victory. January 1937 saw the only fatal accident at Hamsey Green. Richard Taylor, an engineer from Sunbrion Thames, had rented hangar space to assemble his Taylor experimental monoplane. Powered by a 50 horsepower Weir engine, it was of lightweight construction, rather too lightweight. Moments after this photograph was taken, the port wing collapsed and the aircraft plunged to the ground, killing Taylor. The coroner recorded a verdict of accidental death. In the early morning of June the 28th, 1938, a Percival Vega Gull crashed whilst taking off from Hamsey Green. It wasn't, as the press erroneously reported, the 1936 King's Cup air race winning machine, but a near identical aeroplane that Jimmy had bought new from Percival's the previous October. The feeds were two RAF apprentices from Halton, aged 18 and 16 respectively. 
Their aim was to fly to Spain to join the Nationalists in the Civil War. But having broken into the hangar, they realised there wasn't enough fuel. A local garage owner was pressed into providing 60 gallons of petrol. Unaware of the true situation, he then helped the boys push the aircraft outside and refuel it. They managed, after a lot of trying, to get the engine running, and with the 16-year-old boy at the controls, headed off towards Spain. They flew but briefly, their flight finishing in a hedge. No doubt they got a damn good telling off, but punishment was minimal. A couple of months later and Jimmy was up against the local bench. The charge was excessive use of the accelerator pedal. An enthusiastic motorist, in February 1937, Jimmy had bought himself a Type 57 Bugatti. He liked the car tremendously, keeping it until 1976. In the spring of 1938, Jimmy bought a Taylor Cub, and in the summer of that year, Charles took it on an adventure. First stop was Hamble Aerodrome on Southampton Water. The aircraft was transferred to the adjacent slipway, landing gear removed, and a pair of Edo floats fitted. After a couple of solo test flights just to get the hang of the thing, Charles, again accompanied by Peter Marcel, headed west. They planned on landing and refuelling at Weymouth, but a stiff onshore breeze meant the sea was too rough. Instead, Charles elected to land on the East Fleet, a freshwater lake behind Chesil Beach. After borrowing a bicycle to ride to the nearest garage and arrange some fuel, they continued westbound to their first overnight stop at Sulcombe. On leaving Sulcombe, they flew over the wreck of the Herzegine Cecile, beached the previous year in Starhole Bay. The next fuel stop was at Lou Pool, near Helston, where a passing motorist helped them retain fuel. They flew as far west as St Michael's Mount and having rounded the island, headed east once again. Further stops were made at St Moors, Plymouth and Tor Cross. Most conveniently, the Tor Cross Hotel at the south end of Slapton Lake had a petrol pump. After a final fuel stop in Pool Harbour, they flew triumphantly round the Needles, raced two motorboats across the Solent and returned to Hamble. It might only have been a trip from Hampshire to Cornwall and back, but with two people in a 40 horsepower overloaded seaplane, it was quite an achievement. Peter Marcel wrote an account of the trip, published in Flight Magazine, January the 5th, 1939. He noted they were planning further adventures on floats, possibly to Scotland or Norway, but it never happened. In May 1939, Jimmy joined the Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve, Commissioned in September, he gained his wings in early 1940. After operational training, he became one of 56 Fleet Air Arm pilots transferred to the Royal Air Force during the Battle of Britain. Jimmy, complete with Bugatti and matchless motorcycle, joined 242 Squadron under Douglas Bader, with whom he got along with very well. As befits a naval officer, Jimmy's hurricane was decorated with Nelson's famous signal to the fleet before the Battle of Trafalgar. England expects that every man will do his duty. Jimmy certainly did his duty. He flew operationally until 1943, and then as a fighter instructor, latterly chief fighter instructor at the School of Naval Warfare at St. Merrin in Cornwall. He retired from the Navy in 1946. Richard Gardner Sr. had died in 1939, and Jimmy and Charles had both become directors of Yardley Cosmetics. Jimmy eventually becoming managing director and chairman. Neither brother returned to Hamsey Green after the war. Instead, they took up powerboat racing, culminating in them winning the Cows Talkie Cows race in 1967 in their twin V8 motorboat, Sir Fury. Charles Gardner died in 1998, and his younger brother Jimmy died a year later in 1999. Hamsey Green Airfield was used by the Air Training Corps, who continued gliding throughout the Second World War. This aerial photograph is from 1944. It clearly shows marks in the grass from towing and flying gliders. It also shows the buildings and concrete aprons by the hangar. 
A Blackburn Bluebird was stored in the hangars throughout the Second World War, but it was taken away in 1946 and scrapped. The last aircraft, a BAC drone, flew away in 1947. The Air Training Corps moved out in 1953 and the airfield closed. The hangars were used as a hay store until they burnt down in 1975. Today the site is used for playing fields and horse paddocks. The hangar base forms the yard of the Kingswood Equestrian Centre. Jimmy's leopard moth, exported to Karachi in 1938, still survives in India. Charles's Compass Swift, which had quite a colourful post-war career, including a flight from England to the Middle East in the 1970s, is stored away in Cornwall. Peter Marcel's BA Swallow, which he kept at Hamsey Green from 1938 to 1943, is still stored away in the Exeter area, part of the Bertram Arden collection. Jimmy's Bugatti Type 57 survives in America. It's probably the most original Type 57 in existence, having never been rebuilt. Jimmy's Taylor Cub, which is sold in 1945, was exported to Spain in 1953. It came back nearly 40 years later and has been rebuilt by an enthusiast in Wiltshire. The Edo floats, once fitted to the Taylor Cub, were stored away in the hangar until 1973, having been strung up in the rafters in 1938. In the late 1970s, they were temporarily fitted to a Piper Super Cub, just to see if they might work. They didn't, being far too small for the much heavier Super Cub. Of course, being Edo 1070s, they weren't even meant to be fitted to a Taylor Cub. They were designed for the Aronka C3, and as such, for the last few years, have been strung up in my hangar. I bump my head on them regularly. Thank you for watching.